Dogs are retro nerds. You got Tommy the Hammer here hanging out with my good buddy John Rockwood on a Friday. What's up, y'all? And today, he's going to be showing us a movie I'm not too familiar with, but apparently it's an underground punk movie. John, what do you got for us today? I have Overdose, Death of a Punk Rocker, a film by DJ Yarotsky. This guy is actually an old friend of mine and uh, played together. He was my guitarist with the Yars. I'm sure nobody remembers that band whatsoever, but we had a ton of fun with it. And his dream was always to make a movie, and he pretty much does it all here, writing, directing, editing, uh, you know, get, got the cast together himself. This was all his efforts, and I am super thrilled to share with you, my man, because <laughs> this is about as indie as it gets right here. You know, I love movies like this, especially local, uh, you know, produced and funded and directed and, and written. You know, I love that, like, do-it-yourself attitude. John knows I do. I mean, I review tons of these independent, low-budget movies constantly, and it's great to finally see uh, one that's relatively local, because the only one I'm familiar with is uh, The Killer Nerd, and I haven't seen that in fucking years. Um, so, like, yeah, we're going to be checking out this flick. I can't wait. I love watching movies and drinking beer, and speaking of beer, uh, John's brought over some really tasty beverages. John, what type of beer did you bring over? I brought us over a trio from Great Basin Brewery in Sparks, Nevada. Uh, I am one of the many members of the Cleveland Browns subreddit on reddit.com. Plug, plug, that, that. plug away, my friend. <laughs> All right. uh, and one of the great moderators there is uh, does a swap every year called Drafts for the Draft. And pairs up those of us from the Cleveland area with folks from around the country and even Browns fans from around the world. And we buy a bunch of local beers and ship them to each other and share in the great wonderful thing that is beer and is brewed locally all across the U.S. and from around the world. So, yes, we have here, we have first tried the Great Basin Ichthyosaur Icky IPA, and I, for one, think it is absolutely fantastic. You know, I got, I got a test that. Let me look at this uh, bottle here. I'm going to show my uh, audience here. Uh, it's got this really cool fossil logo on it, and everyone knows that I am big into dinosaurs and prehistoric creatures, so naturally I would gravitate towards that one. And based on the label alone, I'm sold. But the flavor, my God. It really is something else. It's just, uh, it's light. I, I, I taste, I can taste this again. It's got some fruit notes to it. No, it's, it's really, it's, gives you that nice little bit of bitter aftertaste without overdoing it, which is apparently really easy to do with IPAs. Um, that's kind of what's kind of driven me away from them up until recently here. I've actually discovered a few decent ones, and <laughs> this one I was a little hesitant about because it's not really big thing in my book, man, this one has pretty much won me over, and yeah. more people like ideas like this one, I will certainly be drinking and enjoying them. Uh, oh yeah, and like, the alcohol content on this one is labeled at 6.4, which is pretty damn good. That'll get you going. Yeah, and uh, it's one of those types of beers I could see myself drinking uh, a lot of during the summer. It's light, it's refreshing. It is light enough to be drinking yeah. outside, chilling by the fire, for sure. Oh yeah, it doesn't rassle the taste buds, so you know what? Uh, at least this flavor uh, of it, um, you know, I gotta say, uh, 10 stars. I'm gonna give this one an 8. <laughs> I mean, it's up there, you know what I'm I, I would easily agree with that. Oh, hell yeah, you know. So anyways, uh, we're gonna keep drinking these beers. We're gonna be hanging out, so don't go nowhere. We're gonna be checking out the film. And I don't know if there's a trailer for this available online, but you know what? I'm gonna see what I can find, and uh, we're gonna cut away to that. But when we return, we're gonna be discussing the movie Overdose, so don't go nowhere. Rock star Brad Stanley was found dead this morning in his Houston apartment of an apparent heroin overdose. I'm gonna find out what really happened to him. You sell strings at a guitar store, dude. You're not fucking Columbo. Shithead, drunk ass punk. I think I can pull off Columbo. Just one more thing. I don't think he overdosed. I'm not gonna buy anything. I'm gonna talk about Brad. What is it with you? Good evening, sir. How can we assist you? I have reason to believe that Brad Stanley was murdered. It wasn't an overdose. Uh, what really happened to Brad is he OD'd. Or can't you read the fucking newspaper? Man, Brad OD'd. Simple as that. Think he OD'd? I think he wanted to join the elite group known as the 27 Club, and his overdose was the vehicle that took him there. All right. What else was a load of shit? What? <sighs> Brian thinks somebody killed Brad. I'm just saying if I did, I would be making the world a better, greener place. Stanley is survived by his wife, Courtney. I think I pulled off the whole grieving widow thing pretty well. You know what Brad did? He kept all the fucking money to himself and didn't give me shit. 
I've been doing a little investigating myself. I've come to the conclusion that our mutual friend Snarf is looking mighty suspicious. Promethazine coating. Fuck! That's a car! I'm gonna fucking kill him. Hold on. Wait, no, 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 no. Listen to your little shit. You're lucky they don't kill you right here. <laughs> I'm giving you the chance at redemption. And you're sitting there playing fucking Sherlock Holmes. You bet your ass I'm gonna do whatever it takes to exonerate his reputation and bring those who did this to fucking justice. Who paid for this fucking funeral? Hot topic. All right, guys, we're right in the middle of the movie, but we're taking a beer break, and we are going to be trying out this other one called Wild Horse Amber Ale. And uh, John, have you had this one before? Uh, I did take a little sneak sample <laughs> of these myself, yeah. and I've had a number of red ales, and this is not the worst one I've ever had. Okay. Right off the bat, it looks great. I mean, the color is, uh... It looks dark, but like not, you know, too intense. It is a little more brown than red, but I mean, it's got kind of a tang to the smell, you know. It's kind of a bitter smell, you know. Oh man, dude, <laughs> um, that's really good too. You know, so far that's two for two. Like that's tasty as fuck. One to ten, there. I give this one a seven. Yeah, that's, yeah, that sounds about right. Um, I don't know if I like this one more than the last one, but, you know, it's a good follow-up. I'll put it that way. <laughs> I mean, I think I'd be, uh, right that idea at eight. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, they're, 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 they're close, but yeah, yeah, I'd say, you know, it, it, I mean, it's a bit apples to oranges, an IPA versus an amber ale. Sure. But, uh, sure. I mean, they definitely each hold their own in their respective categories. Oh, yeah. All right, guys, so we just got done watching the movie Overdose, but uh, before we talk about the film, we're going to be tasting our third beer from the batch. Uh, John, which one is this? This is Outlaw, a milk stout, which, I don't know, I didn't really think milk and beer would go together <laughs> so well, but like I said, I had a little sneak taster of this earlier, and I got to say, it went down very easy, and it is very delicious. I like that. It's a bit nut. Yeah, it's, uh, maybe a, like a like a java bean. Well, it's funny you mentioned java because when I tried this, I was like, wow, that's like a rich mocha coffee kind of a flavor. Yeah. I know that's not quite for everybody, but for this guy anyway, I found it to be incredibly delicious. It's not like, I mean, certain dark beers, like an arrogant bastard, I mean, it earns its name yeah, yeah. purposely. <laughs> yeah, that kind of a, yeah, really... But this one here, the Outlaw, like, uh, you know, I think that kind of embodies it right there. Like, it's got enough bite to, like, and let's see here. This one is 5.2, so it's along the lines of the last beer that we just had uh, in terms of alcohol content. But, yeah, it, you're right, a dessert beer. I can see this wrapping things up nicely. And um, out of 10 stars, I think I'm going to give this one... We give this one a seven. That being said, yes. uh, let's talk about the movie now. Uh, Overdose, the death of a punk rocker. And uh, John, why don't you go ahead and tell us what you thought of it first? I mean, this is probably a little bit different for you, considering you knew these guys. True, true. You jammed with these uh, guys. Yeah, um, it was it was really neat to see, you know, what he was telling me actually on the screen. Uh, I've been really looking forward. I've, I've been holding off on watching this until I can watch it with my boy Tommy here because I know he would appreciate this piece of cinema. And I did. And, uh, yeah, yeah, so it was really, really good to see that up on the screen. Um, definitely felt, uh, I mean, just because I, I know Dwight, he really, I mean, his, his fingerprints are all over the movie. I didn't know these guys, but, like, watching the movie, you get a sense of understanding of who they are, of uh, who their personalities are, and what type of message, at least the lead, uh, you know, antagonist was trying to convey to the audience. So. You know, I kind of plays characters a little bit, having played in a punk rock band, you right. know, so it, it was at least a little, a really good layer for me. I had to give them props for the scene uh, in the bathroom there where uh, Snarf's hands are turning to baloney. I didn't know <laughs> exactly what was going on right there, and that was great. Why I'm so glad you included that little bit in the movie. I really. It's like an inside joke, kind of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> These guys are from Ohio. Obviously, they're in Texas now. But um, 
there was a sense of towniness to them and the message and the dialogue and, what, and the little inside jokes here and there. So, like, I don't know, for, for me too, like, I don't know any of these guys, but, like, all the references, you know, and then John's commentary, like, I don't know, it rooted me a little bit further into this film. Overall, though, I thought the dialogue um, was spot on. It reminded me of Kevin Smith. Right. Uh, a lot like Clerks, you know, where there's, like, a lot of banter, a lot of nothing particularly going on, but it's really the writing. Um, if I had to voice a, a complaint or a critique, it would be uh, to trim the fat. Uh, some of the scenes kind of went on a little bit longer than, you know, I would have preferred. It seemed like it did derail a little bit in a couple of places sure. where, uh, I mean, it was interesting, it was engaging, but it was like, okay, let's yeah. move it along a little bit more. Sure. The production for an independent release was pretty damn good. Um, and, like, the camera work and um, just the, the way it was filmed was very clean and precise. Like, and I believe that's kind of a double-edged sword for this movie. Like, you're sitting there, you're watching, you're enjoying it like a mainstream film, but at the same time, the punk rock scene, like, you envision it being very gritty. And I feel like had it been filmed with a very, like, almost, like, like gritty underground vibe, it would have really sold the movie to a bar was a little clean. Yeah, yeah, but that's not a problem necessarily. I mean, it's like I said, like, you know, I feel kind of both ways about it. The humor had me in stitches. Some of the jokes are just priceless. I mean, there's good jokes and there's <laughs> jokes so bad. Yeah. They, it's still funny. Some groaners and yeah, groaners. Yeah, exactly. You got, you got kind of a wide spectrum when it when it comes to the humor there. Right. The and, music's uh, really good, too. Like, I mean, yeah. like the, 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 the driving punk soundtrack really kind of carried the film too. You had the definitely, dialogue, definitely. the soundtrack, the, you know, the humor of the characters. Yeah, I, I like kind of jamming out to that constant, you know, yeah. little something in the background there. It was, I, exactly. I it, yeah. More independent movies should like take a note that music is key. Um, I think I'm going to give the, the film overall, like I'm going to say like probably like a solid seven and a half. Um, you know, if you're into punk, and you're into, especially if you're from Ohio, anyone that's a townie will get a kick out of this film. For sure. So if you've never heard of it before, check it out. John, what, did, what would you get out of 10 stars? Out of 10 stars, <laughs> I'd give it a 7, for sure. I, I was very entertained by it. I mean, that's why we're watching the movies, right? To be entertained. And exactly. it did entertain me a lot. Like I said, uh, I mean, maybe it's uh, just having, you know, being on the inside of a couple of those jokes that uh, kind of helped me get a little bit more out of it, but I mean, there, there's such odd points in the movie, I think it'll just, you know, captivate anybody who watches it. Yeah, it's fun. And uh, it takes you on a ride, you know? Yeah. It, it's it's not your father's murder mystery. Not at all. It's, it's essentially an, an underground indie punk rock murder mystery. And, uh... Wrap your head around that. <laughs> Check it out. 7 out of 10 stars. Great movie. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out, y'all. <laughs> but wait, there's more. We've got one special little sneak preview here of the bonus features. Now, this is something that you probably saw if you did watch the movie and thought, wow, this is so cool. <laughs> and it is the Atari guitar that you see in a few scenes. Now, that was actually hand custom built by Dwight and his old man. Bought a crappy guitar, hacked the thing up, and made that awesome guitar. I actually kind of helped salvage it. By the time we were in a band together here, it was falling apart a little bit. I kind of helped shore the thing back up, gave it a bit of a paint job. It was kind of a running joke with us for a while that people were just watching us for the Atari guitar and that we sucked and everybody just loved the guitar. Do you like video games? Yeah! Do you like playing the guitar? Then you'll love the guitar -y. This innovatively designed guitar was handcrafted by rock legend Dwight Henson. Basically, I love video games. I love the guitar. It's the only natural to combine the two. Into the guitar -y. The guitar -y comes in a wide variety of colors for you to choose from. But there's more to the guitar than just pretty colors. Let's hear what just a few of our satisfied customers have to say. It was our first show and we were doing terrible. But then I brought on the guitar -y. And everybody loved it. It looked great. Thanks, Guitari. I know you care for Guitaris too much. So far, for one, I love Guitari. With its little sap fish. It's beautiful. Guitari.
Nobody can have her but me. <laughs> but the guitar doesn't just look amazing, it sounds great too. Just listen to it in the hands of the master. The great guitar is only $19.95, but wait, call within the next 15 minutes and we'll send you Dwight Hensley the Hour's used album, Bittersweet, free! At the $15 value, absolutely no cost to you. Oh now! The great guitar can be used for $19.95. The dollar promise guitar comes with no money back guarantee. Offer not available in Puerto Rico while you're at work. Actual one of the very